Hello and welcome to the Art and History and Fiction podcast. I'm Gladys Strickland, author of adventure thrillers that focus on art and history. And today we're going to be talking about my book, The Stonemason Secret. The protagonist of every story needs to seek an object of desire. It is something they search for. It can be a physical object, a relationship, a resolution to a problem, or a combination of things. No matter what it is, the search drives them throughout the book. Often the antagonist, the villain, wants the same thing. The tension created as both parties try to get to the object of desire keeps readers turning pages. For the stonemason secret object of desire, I wanted an artifact of historical significance. I also wanted something different or find a unique twist on a more familiar object. I began with an internet search for legends about ancient objects. The result pulled up some well-known artifacts, such as the Holy Grail and Jason's Fleece. I continued reading the list and came across the Cup of Jamshid. Have you ever heard of the Cup of Jamshid? I hadn't, which met my criteria of finding something different to write about. As I researched the cup, I could not find a lot of information about it. So I gathered as much information as I could find online and created its history as best as I could. According to the legend, the cup of Jamshid was a cup of divination. There is no record of how it came into existence, but it is recorded as belonging to Jamshid, the fourth ruler of the Pisdadian dynasty of ancient Persia. I found no mention of what the cup was made of. Descriptions have described it as a crystal ball or crystal globe, but images of it are often a golden cup. The legend says seven rings circled it. There are some scholars who believe the legend of the cup of Jamshed was a precursor to the legend of the Holy Grail. What makes the cup of Jamshid so important is that it would fill with an elixir. Drinking the elixir would give you immortality, while looking at it would reveal deep truth, giving the viewer omnipotence. Quite a powerful combination. That is why I thought it would be the right object of desire for the stonemason secret. What happened to the cup of Jamshid? According to legend, Persia prospered during the first half of Jamshid's reign. Many technological advances occurred, and the people were prosperous. During the second half, however, Jamshid said all good things came from him and not their god. This prideful behavior turned the people against him. He faced challengers to his throne, and Zanhek eventually defeated him. Jamshid then fled halfway around the world, with Zanhek following and murdering him. I found no mention of what happened to the cup after Jamshid's ouster. There are a handful of mentions of the cup throughout Persian literature, but nothing about what became of it. This is where I created the story of how it moved from ancient Persia to East Yorkshire. So what I made up for the stonemason secret, I'll tell you about that. I love to read the notes at the end of adventure thriller novels that differentiate between what is fact and what is fiction in the book. While I listed above the facts about the cup of jump sheet as best as I could find them, what comes next is the story I created telling the rest of the story of the cup. I've tied events related to the cup to historical events where I could. So for the stonemason secret, I say soldiers loyal to Jamshid hid the cup in Persia, keeping it safe until Alexander the Great conquered the area in the 4th century BCE, claiming it as a spoil of war. 
He kept it with him for several years before sending to his capital of Pella. In 168 BCE, conquering Roman soldiers found it and took it to Rome, where it was placed in a storeroom and forgotten. Think of the scene at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the Ark is secured in a wooden box and stamped with a number and taken into a massive warehouse stacked full of similar boxes. Later, a stonemason was searching the storeroom and found the cup. Examining it, he saw the elixir and realized the power it possessed. Not wanting the Roman emperor to gain access to it and its power, the stonemason recruited other stonemasons to help steal the cup of Jamshid and take it out of Rome. This group of stonemasons became known as the Keepers. As members aged, they recruited new ones to carry on their cause. They protected the cup for centuries, hiding it, then moving it with them to keep it safe from others. Eventually, some of the stonemasons ended up in England with the cup. William de Malton, master mason at Beverly Minster in the 14th century, joined the keepers. I also created the Guard of Jamshid, a select group of soldiers loyal to him. Even after he lost the throne and fled Persia, they remained loyal. They hid and protected the cup, keeping it safe in the hopes Jamshid would one day return. When Alexander the Great sacked the city, his soldiers took it. The guard's mission then changed to one of recovering the cup and returning it to its rightful home. The guard of Jamshid pursued rumors of the cup through Europe and over the centuries came close to it many times. It was in the 14th century that they caught up with the keepers. William de Malton had moved the cup and to keep the guard from finding it, he placed clues on the medieval minstrel figures in Beverly Minster. He tried to get word to other keepers about where the clues were, but the guard captured and poisoned him. The location of the cup of Jamshid died with him. With the cup missing, the keeper's mission became one of finding the cup while also keeping knowledge of its secret to prevent others from finding it. The guard of Jamshid, who continued searching after all these centuries, were still determined to reclaim it for Persia and to bring Jamshid back to life. When Sarah Walker, the protagonist in the stonemason secret, finds the clues on the minstrel carvings, she must try to figure out where they lead while keeping one step ahead of the guard. While I used historical events and places, what happened to the Cup of Jamshid is fiction. Although who knows, there may have been a real Cup of Jamshid. Maybe it ended up in England, lost for centuries. Maybe there are clues on the medieval minstrel carvings in Beverly Minster that lead to the location of the cup, just waiting to be discovered. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Art and History and Fiction podcast. You can find show notes at gladysstrickland.com, which will go over um, a transcript of this and also give you resources to link to to check out the actual historical events behind this. I hope you'll join me next time for the next episode from the Art and History and Fiction podcast. Until then, goodbye.